So, now let us uh, come to the discussion of the force. So, for our uh, studies for this module, we will be using relatively short range force or the potential. I mean the force you basically take by a gradient of the potential and the potential that we shall be using for the purpose of our study is the so called the Leonard Jones potential. Okay. And the expression of this Leonard Jones potential looks like this. So, V of R is equal to 4 epsilon, epsilon is a unit of energy, uh, it sets the scale of the energy and into sigma to the power r, sigma is a parameter, I shall explain what that means, minus sigma by r to the power 6. Okay. So, uh, so, this potential looks uh, something like this, like this. Right. So, here you have I plotted uh, V of r on the y axis and uh, on the x axis is r and the functional form of the potential when you plot this function uh, it looks like uh, very sharp sharply increasing potential for r less than equal to sigma. Okay. So, it is very fastly increasing after that there is a potential minima, there is some attractive potential, this is negative here and then it will gradually goes to 0 as r increases. So, what does what does this potential mean? I mean what does it signify? So, suppose that you had two particles, right? I mean you are uh, calculating the interaction between two particles and there were spherical particles and uh, of size of radius sigma by 2. Okay. So, when they were at a distance r which is greater than sigma, sigma, so each is sigma by 2. So, when they touch suppose these are those two particles and when they touch the distance between their centers would be exactly sigma and at sigma you see that the potential is exactly 0, but as soon as the distance between particles becomes less than sigma. So, basically less than the diameter. Uh, there is an extremely fast increase in the repulsive potential, right. So, sigma by r to the power 12 is the repulsive potential and it increases extremely fast as basically the particles start to overlap. So, this is what basically is modeling the so called, so this repulsive interaction is modeling the excluded volume interaction. What is excluded volume interaction? Basically, that two particles cannot sit or they are not allowed to sit on top of each other because there would be basically if they are atoms or even there are particles, if two, partic uh, two particles uh, basically they exclude some volume, the two particles cannot simply sit on top of each other. Electrons would repel electron from the two atoms they would repel repel the uh, two particles away from each other right so what does it say so uh, at a distance less than sigma the potential is uh, sharply increasing at a, uh, at a distance slightly more than r equal to sigma there is an attractive weakly attractive interaction well weakly or not it really depends upon this value epsilon and at larger distances if these two particles go farther and uh, farther apart there is a uh, attraction but it's very weak it's the potential is nearly tending towards zero negative but zero the minima of the potential the minima of the potential is at a value of sigma m and you can calculate that so you can calculate the position of the minima so, how do you take the, how do you calculate the maxima or minima of a certain function? So, here the function being v of r, basically you take dv dr equal to 0, right and then solve for the value of r at which it is minima. So, basically dv, uh, dv dr equal to 0 is the condition of a maxima and minima and later you can check uh, that it is a minima. So, the value of uh, sigma m comes out to be 2 to the power 1 by 6 sigma, sigma being the diameter of a particle or sigma by 2 is the radius of a particle. So, uh, basically where does this expression for the potential come from? Uh, so, basically sigma by r to the power 6 is the so called dispersion forces between neutral atoms. So, basically if you have neutral atoms like argon noble ga gas. 
um, where it has no net uh, magnetic moment and so on and so forth, uh, no charge and so on and so forth. So, basically what happens is that the center of the positive charge which is the nucleus and the electrons, uh, they basically oscillate, they move around in space due to which there are local, local in time effective dipoles which are formed and these dipoles are constantly fluctuating, I mean the strength of the dipoles are constantly fluctuating because, uh, because basically the charges are moving around and the center of charge of the electron cloud need not exactly match all the time. On an average of course, it matches, but not uh, locally. And so, basically because of this fluctuating dipoles, two atoms or particles if you like, they, uh, because Leonard Jones is also often uh, used to model uh, weak attraction between larger particles, it is just a model and it is a good model system, but it works very well for argon. Uh, basically, what you have is, uh, uh, so when you have two atoms because of these two fluctuating dipoles, there is a weak attraction uh, which is induced and which has been shown uh, to go as um, sigma by r to the power 6, r to the power 6, right. And this, uh, so that, that is the origin of this minus sigma r to the power 6, weakly attractive term. This sigma by r to the power 12 is basically put ad hoc and the aim is it should model the short distance extremely strong repulsion between particles, right. So, that two particles do not overlap and you see that it is increasing as r to the power 12. So, it is very fast decreasing as soon as r becomes less than sigma. If r becomes less than sigma, sigma by r is a number greater than 1 and then it sharply uh, increases and it increases faster than r to the power uh, sigma to, uh, by r to the power 6, right. On the other hand, when r is greater than sigma, so then uh, sigma by r is a quantity which is uh, less than 1 and when you take powers of small quantity, suppose 0 0.5 to the power uh, square is 0 0.25 and then you take a power uh, you take another power 0 0.5 to the power 3 and then it is um, 0.625 and so on and so forth right. So, it uh, well 25 to, to uh, yeah. So, uh, basically if you take a small number and keep on powering it, it will go slow uh, small to smaller and smaller values. Basically, if you take 0 0.1 whole square it is 0 0.01, 0 0.1 whole cube is 0 0.001 and so on and so forth. So, this basically dominates over this at large distances, but this dominates over this at short distances, right. So, that is uh, what it is. Uh, good. Now, you might have noticed that uh, basically this point here where uh, the potential goes to 0 is uh, at uh, sigma uh, at when r equal to sigma. So, when they are just touching and that typically is set as the unit of length in our simulations, which means that you measure all other distances in terms of this value sigma. Okay. So, that is for the Leonard Jones. If you have a different potential, then you have to set it, uh, you set your units suitably. I mean here, suppose you are modeling argon atoms, suppose right, then sigma there would be some a few angstroms. Now, in the computer, you are not going to put in, um, in uh, angstroms, I mean you are not going to put 10 to the minus 10 meters as units of your simulation. You set your sigma, you say okay, the diameter of the atom is set to 1, whether it be 2 uh, angstrom, 3 angstrom, whatever be it, uh, you set it equal to 1 and measure all other lengths, the distance between particles in units of that. Suppose, uh, you have a box size which you can choose to be 30 sigma, 30 cross 30 cross 30 sigma, which means that the length of the box is 30 times the diameter of the particles. Right, and then of course you have x, y, and z, the three directions. That's 30 cross 30 cross 30 sigma, and uh, well, you can also set sigma equal to one nanometer. If suppose you are studying uh, some system with a particle size of one nanometer or one micron, whatever be it, uh, so you basically set that to be equal to one and measure 
all other distances in terms of that units. Similarly, you can set epsilon. What was epsilon? Epsilon was the unit of energy if you remember it is this epsilon. You set epsilon to be equal to 1, the depth of the potential equal to 1 uh, uh, and then measure all other energies like thermal energy K B T in units of this uh, uh, in units of so say, say K B T equal to some number times epsilon and you set epsilon equal to 1 and then say okay, K B T is 2 if you set epsilon equal to 1 then A equal to 2. So, the thermal energy is twice that of uh, epsilon. By the way, uh, one thing which I had forgotten to tell you in the previous slide is you might have noticed that the unit of energy has been written as 4 epsilon here. So, this is the unit of energy, these numbers are of course, dimensionless, sigma has is diameter by r. So, the reason you write it like this is if you write it like this, then the depth of the potential at the minima becomes epsilon, right. Now, if you have chosen it to be as well some other quantity suppose b. So, if you had written b here, then the depth of the potential at the minima would have been b by 4. Right. So, it is a convention that you write the expression of the Leonard Jones in as 4 epsilon, so that you know that uh, uh, the depth of the potential is epsilon and then all other energies like thermal energy. So, if you have very low temperature, low thermal energy, then all particles would like to aggregate together because of this attractive interaction. So, this, this uh, attraction, attractive energy would dominate, the potential energy would dominate over the kinetic energy, kinetic energy because the kinetic energy is related to k b t right half m v square equal to half k b t per degree of uh, freedom. So, or half m v square v is the speed um, then v square is 3 by 2 k b t if you take the 3 degrees of freedom right. So, so that is the picture. So, that is the discussion of the, the starting discussion for the potential and so what you have you essentially have a simulation box like this right. I have not plotted uh, the uh, box fully in the third uh, direction the z direction suppose this is y this is x and these blue things are basically particles Leonard Jones the particles interacting by Leonard Jones interactions right. So, each particle if you like so let us focus on this particle, this particle is interacting with this particle, this particle is interacting with this particle, but this particle is also interacting with this, 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 this all other possible uh, particles uh, far away into the box because this potential essentially goes to 0 only at infinity. It ha might have a very low value at higher distances, but still it is not 0. So, for each particle you have to calculate the potential uh, the and the force of interaction between all of the particles in the box and similarly if you have n particles. So, n particle you have to calculate the force with n minus 1 particle and so on so forth it is basically n square calculation right. So, you have n particles in a box of volume V as I told you we are studying canonical ensemble, we will be studying the system in a canonical ensemble right. Now, that is a bit of a problem, why is it a problem because it is extremely expensive, it is if you have 1000 particles then to calculate the force each time you have to do a 1 million force calculations right. Whereas, as I just told uh, to you that uh, basically at distances very far away at distances are much greater than sigma the 3 sigma 4 sigma 5 sigma here the value of the potential is rather weak and even if you calculate the forces you will see that there are very weak forces uh, acting between the particles. So, that is not really affecting the motion. So, suppose uh, that you had a particle here it is interacting with another particle here right, but the force of attraction is extremely weak its effect will not uh, I mean it will be felt, but overall statistically it will not make much of a difference if 
you say that beyond a certain distance uh, say R c, okay, uh, beyond a certain distance R c say, so you say that the potential is completely 0, you set the potential completely equal to 0. So, here the repulsive, the strongly repulsive interaction stays, the weak, uh, the attractive part of the interaction stays, but at R greater than R c, uh, so instead of this figure, or the Leonard Jones, you have essentially a modified Leonard Jones, so that you say that you know what, the V of R beyond a certain cutoff distance, R c cutoff that is why there is a R, uh, subscript c there is equal to 0, it is set to 0. So, then what happens, what does it mean? So, it means that, that suppose there is a particle, this is a particle in question, you want to calculate the forces, the potential of interaction between this particle and all of the particles in the box. So, basically all the particles which are neighboring particles which are within a distance R c given by this dashed line, they feel some force, some interaction potential, but beyond any particle which is suppose here or here which is greater than the distance R c between this particle feels a 0 force. So, what do you get? You get that you do not have to calculate the expression of the force and the potential for a very large number of particles. If, a, if this is the your particle in question, you are calculating the force only for suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 particles which are neighboring particles and not uh, the force between this and this and all the particles which are far away. So, your calculation speed, uh, your calculation efforts or rather the calculation effort for the computer decreases significantly and it has been ch checked already by previous studies and you can check it yourself as well that this slight change does not affect the physics much. Similarly, if you are interested to calculate the force for suppose this uh, red particle, all that you have to do is check out which particles are within a distance less than R c and calculate it the force for only those particles, right. So, basically what you have now is that the expression for the Leonard Jones, Jones interaction gets modified to this. So, that V of R is the standard Leonard Jones term for R is less than equal to R c and V R equal to 0 for all R's for for all r r being the distance between two particles distance between the centers of two particles it's set equal to 0 so that's very nice and good but there's always a but and there's a problem the problem is that basically the potential becomes discontinuous at r equal to r c. So, there is a certain potential here, a so finite value of the potential here and suddenly there is a jump and the potential goes to 0, right, because you have cut it off was the solution. Uh, a priori the solution looks quite simple, shift the potential up. So, that instead of having this uh, magenta colored potential which you have also had a look at in the previous slide, you have this green curve, right, which I have just shifted up. Uh, by by how much by the value of the potential which was at this point so suppose the value of the potential at r equal to rc was vc you just shift the entire potential up you just subtract the value of vc from the entire potential that the own uh, entire potential gets shifted up right and you can do your derivatives and calculate your force and so on and so forth so so, then the potential at least goes smoothly to 0 at r equal to r c and beyond that it remains 0. So, this is the potential becomes a continuous function, the expression for the potential then becomes v dash r, right, because you have modified it. So, this was your original Leonard Jones expression for the potential and your new potential modified Leonard Jones potential becomes v r minus v c for r less than equal to r c 
and v dash r equal to 0 for r greater than r c. Now, this quantity is continuous, this function is continuous in the value uh, um, uh, even at uh, r equal to r c, it smoothly goes to 0. What are the values of r c you can take? So, suppose you took r c to be 3 sigma, right? 3 times sigma. So, if you are taking sigma equal to 1, you take r c equal to 3 sigma. So, that sigma by r is 1 by 3. Then the value of v c would be 0 0.001. So, basically it goes very quickly to 0 at distances beyond uh, 2, 2 or 3 sigma. 3 sigma the value of the potential would be uh, 0 0.00137. So, you can choose the value of v c here to be this right. You, you fix the cutoff right at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the code and shift the potential off. You could as well have chosen uh, r c equal to 2.5 sigma. What would be the advantage? It is uh, basically you have to calculate the interaction uh, between the particle of your interest and its neighboring particles over a shorter distance. So, you will have a sh smaller number of neighbors over which to, uh, with which to calculate and the corresponding v c is you can calculate it is rather small it is 0 0.004. So, the message is it goes rather quickly to 0 at these r c at r equal to 3 sigma or 2.5 sigma you can choose your r c to be 3.5 sigma there is nothing holy it is basically you just set it because the physics is not changing because the potential the shift in the potential is so low and if at even higher distances the value of the potential would be even lower right. So, you would think that it is quite nice and you can go ahead and do the simulations and in fact, if you were doing a Monte Carlo simulations you could just work with this where the potential smoothly goes to 0. So, if two particles are close together uh, they feel a repulsion as they go farther apart. Uh, they feel some attraction, but th as they go farther and farther apart the particles the interaction between the particles becomes weaker and uh, after some point at beyond r equal to r c at r equal to r c it becomes 0 and beyond that it remains 0. Of course, as two particles are moving fa farther and farther apart from each other this particle could meet some other a particle which is at some other point in the box right and then it would feel attracted to that and then it could come close to each other to that other particle it could collide with it and move apart or stake depends upon the kinetic energy right. Uh, but it happens that for if you are doing molecular dynamics you have to work not with the potential. So, though I have been discussing the potential what you actually have to work with is the force which is minus dv dr the expression for the force is by taking a derivative a gradient of the potential right and what is the expression if you had leonard jones potential then by taking the derivative this is what you would get you just take a ddr uh, and correct for the so you have a minus dv dr as a definition of the force and you would get 12 sigma to the power 12 and r to the power 13 minus 6 sigma to the power 6 r to the power 7 right. So, you take a derivative you would get a minus sign, but then this minus sign uh, takes care of this. So, basically you again have this thing here and this thing here. Now, you have taken the potential you have moved the potential smoothly to 0 at r equal to r c, but the thing you have to work with is not the potential, but the force and that this function still remains discontinuous at r equal to r c. So, basically what is happening it is uh, two particles as they are moving farther and farther away from each other they are feeling some weak attractive force and suddenly it goes to 0 right there is a jump there is a discontinuity in the potential. So, we have to ensure that both the potential and the force go smoothly to 0 at r equal to r c ok. It is not very difficult, but it will be take 10 minutes of your time and hence we will discuss this in the next class. Thank you.